Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. I'm going to show off a few things that are flowering here in the landscape uh, right in the middle of March. It's been a very, very early season. Lots of things have jumped ahead. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the uh, daffodils. I put up a separate video the other day with, I think, 10 were open at the time. Probably have 12 different varieties or something uh, blooming right now. Uh, I'm not going to talk about hyacinths, some of the old some of the other tulips that are blooming. There's there's lots of other flowering things out here, but they've been talked about in other videos. So I figure I'll skip to some things that are uh, new and uh, interesting for the season so far. These uh, species tulips, these uh, Tulipia clusiana, which is, um, this is Lady Jane, kind of looks like a, uh, a peppermint, a pepper, you know, a, some sort of peppermint uh, tulip. They've closed up for the afternoon. We're shooting this later in the afternoon. During the day, these are these are wide open very attractive. They've long bloomed. They've actually been blooming for a couple weeks at this point. We've got several clusters of these. And we have several other uh, species tulips as well. These tend to uh, not require as much cold treatment uh, as some of the other tulips do for us. So they um, tend, tend to be more reliable coming back. And uh, these are bigger, better, fuller than they were last year. And that's the opposite of any other tulips I normally have here in the South. Here's another group of species tulips. This is Baker's Lilac Wonder. Was Tulipia Bakeri. It's now got a different species name. Uh, this one's still a little bit open later in the afternoon. Has a beautiful yellow center, bright yellow center, and then that kind of pink uh, outer, uh, the, pet the petals. And again, extremely reliable coming back here in the south. We have several clusters of these uh, throughout the garden. They put on a long show, and then the foliage is is so small they, they're, they're you know that it doesn't stand out in the landscape the the bee bomb that's planted around it there will just take over and uh, um, you know it would be like they were never here but they bloom for a long time I'm also not going to include the uh, pansies and uh, panolas and violas and other things we have blooming out here again another thing we've talked a lot about but they are taking off and really look great right now this is a camellia japonica called lemon glow I have one open flower on it it has five or six total buds on it. So I'm gonna get a, a couple more. This one was planted, not necessarily at the best time of year, two years ago. So it got hurt last winter. And then we had the big freeze event back in December and it got hurt again. And uh, I think this spring it'll have enough roots under it that it's really gonna to start to take off and look great. But this is one of my absolute favorite Camellia japonicas. And you can see why. You can see why it's called Lemon Glow as well. That little bit of yellow inside this uh, almost perfect double. We have this Brunera or Brunera uh, called Jack Frost, and it is just starting to flower now. Really doesn't need to flower. Beautiful blue, little blue, delicate, super delicate flowers. There'll be lots more coming on it, but again, it just really doesn't need any of that. This foliage just has this uh, hairy surface to it. It's really inc absolutely incredible. Um, every bit, every part of this plant is amazing to me. It's in a part shade space, really, really loving life uh, where it is. I expect it to get quite a bit bigger uh, as the uh, season goes on. This is Ralston's Hardy Viburnum. Funny thing about this plant, I can probably put it in the it's blooming this week uh, category uh, about 30 of the weeks out of the year. It's incredible how often you can look at this plant and see flowers on it. Um, Viburnum ovatum is a native um, evergreen shrub to the southeast um actually south of where we are here in raleigh though uh and then uh this is this is ralston's hardy it's a dwarf version of it uh see this plant being used more and more and more it's just such a great little compact uh blooming machine really and again it's a you know it's a it's a it's a native can be kind of boxed off and kept a little bit formal or just allowed to grow. And this is this is two years in the ground and it's barely reached two feet in height and maybe two and a half feet in width at this point. This pulmonaria or lungwort is called spring bouquet. I did show this one time a couple weeks ago, but I wanted to show it again. It's probably doubled in size during that period of time and it's just blooming like mad. It's kind of got that purple and pink flowers uh, on the same plant, plus the variegated foliage even after it's finished uh, flowering. That one will kind of retreat on us a bit during the uh, summertime. So it'll look great throughout the spring and then it'll just kind of uh, fade back into the background. I'm not talking about the hellebores uh, in this video. We have lots and lots of hellebores out here flowering, but again, I included them all in a video a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is a Pieris called Mountain Snow. This is a Southern Living Plant Collection one. Great. This is the perfect kind of 
shot for this plant because it still has the it still has the little pendulous white flowers on it that the bees absolutely love on warmer uh, warmer after, sunnier afternoons, and then as the flowers are finishing, this new growth comes on it, which is this just amazing color on it. It's almost it's almost worthy of calling it a second round of flowering. Almost it's so showy. Uh, really, really stands out here in the back garden. Uh, this one was a little bit stunted because this is a dry area back here. Uh, I've talked about it a couple times where things back here really struggled at first, but this one is really broken through. And it looks like it's going to put on a good amount of growth. These pieris like this will typically only, they grow really, really quickly right out of the gate in the spring. And then they just kind of stop uh, during the summertime and it'll just be green uh, foliage and it'll disappear behind some other flowering perennials that are coming up in front of it. We put up a video several weeks ago cutting back some perennials, uh, like the old hellebore leaves, so that they're more showy when they're actually in flower. We did the same thing on the epimedium here, or barren wart, and they're starting to put up some flowers now. We have several varieties. This one we actually don't know the, uh, uh, the cultivar name. We got this one from a, from a friend. These flowers are super, they're tiny, but they're super complex. There's a lot going on there in color and just, little uh, li these little teeny tiny flowers pop up for several weeks here in the spring and there'll be lots of them and just, this is just the very beginning of it and again we have lots of these uh, epimediums out here in the landscape great shade ground covers um, the foliage looks great after they finish flowering through the summer we typically will cut most of the foliage back to make way for these flowers here in the late winter and then in the early spring um, they'll bloom for several weeks like this. We have this variegated Elysium called Gray Ghost, and when the foliage looks good, you can understand why it's called Gray Ghost. It has a, just kind of a gray-blue hint uh, to the foliage, and it has a little bit of a variegated stripe uh, in, in the leaf or along, right along the edges of the leaf. Really beautiful plant. The winter cold, that December freeze really took its toll on it, but it has not slowed it down from flowering at all. And it's going, it's, it starts off, um, you know, these clusters of buds here uh, has less light pink uh, flower on it. This is one of the oldest, um, Elysium are one of the oldest flowering plants uh, on the planet. Just really in super interesting flowers. We have lots of Elysium in the back garden. The one that was the most cold damage is the first one blooming, but over the next few weeks, we'll show you the others uh, as they start to flower. I think we have four different uh, Elysium out here currently. We still have lots of flowers on the Osmanthus fragrans. Uh, you can smell them on the uh, warmer days. They don't flower as much in the late winter as they do in the fall. They bloom on that temperature change in the fall as the days get shorter, the nights get cooler. They really come into full flower uh, this time of year. We have a few residual flowers and with Osmanthus fragrance or fragrant tea olives, you don't need many flowers. Lots of new growth on that plant. And unfortunately we have a couple nights here in the low thirties uh, and that one is really vulnerable to getting some uh, to getting some of that new foliage knocked back. We'll, we'll see in the next few days. Uh, same thing with the Laurapetalum. We've got three Laurapetalum that are absolutely in peak uh, bloom this week. This is Carolina Midnight, which is a very large growing variety. You know, you can now get Laurapetalum to fit pretty much any space that you'd want to put them, as long as you've got enough sun. Um, they, do need, uh, they do need lots of sun. But this is a purple foliage Laurapetalum that gets quite big and we're using it as a screening plant, which is pretty much the appropriate use for one of these really large growing uh, Laura Petalum. It can be tree formed uh, or, you know, in the, and actually has really nice stems on it if we wanted to, and then un maybe underplant it or maybe underplant it with something else, or it can be pruned down from the top like we did. Has these little frilly flowers, like most things in the uh, witch hazel family, just these little furry looking flowers. The two others that are in full bloom right this minute are Purple Daydream. Purple Daydream is a great dwarf, purple foliage variety, has pinkish, almost red flowers. Same thing with just Carolina Midnight. These are more toward the red side of pink than most of the others are. Still pink, but it's definitely closer to red. And then we have one called Emerald Snow, which is a dwarf green foliage variety that just gets absolutely covered in white flowers, as you can see right here. So there's some of the things that are blooming. I meant to, I think I wanted to go for 10, uh, 10 things that were blooming this week in the landscape. I don't know how many that actually is, but it's a good amount. And there's lots of other things. Steph and I are walking through here as we're going and realizing that we could probably do this 
depending on these temperatures we get in the next few nights, we could probably do this again next week and have 10 new things. There's a, tons of things coming to life and waking up for the season. So what's blooming in your garden right now? We'd love to hear. Thanks for watching.